everyone, thank you for coming to watch this video and um, I hope you find something on it that um, is helpful to you in your development. My name is Diane Hall, I'm an author, medium, intuitive, angel intuitive and channel um, and a psychic development teacher. I teach others how to develop their intuition and how to connect with their guides and angels, how to develop psychically and how to become much more inspired and connected generally and today I've got 10 tips that will help you to connect with your angels and guides I've made some notes just to remind me number one is ask for a connection so as you probably know our angels and guides will work with us um, as much as we are able to allow them to they will not intervene and they will not intrude upon our free will however they will constantly guide us unconsciously and in ways that help us to improve our lives and that keep us out of danger. But if you really want to have a conscious connection with them, to speak with them, to hear them, and to be able to use their inspired guidance to help others, then you have to first of all ask for that sort of connection and say that you're ready. And when you do that, that will allow them to come into your life much more strongly, to introduce themselves, to make you aware of their presence. And, um, and it's a really wonderful connection, a, a really, really exciting experience when they do. So that's number one, ask for a connection. And you can do that through prayer, you can just sit quietly, light a white candle and set your intention to work in the highest vibration of love and to call in your guides, your team of guides and helpers who are here in service to love, to light and who wish to help you to fulfil your divine mission on this earth at this time. So, number two, meditation. Number two, if anything, is probably the most important one at all. So I don't know why I've put it at number two, but you could almost stop here. Meditation is the es essential way to connect and to continue to develop those connections over time. Because our communications with our guides and angels are happening constantly. They're just happening in other dimensions. So in other words, they're happening in our unconscious mind. You know, you go to pick up the phone and then you think, no, I don't feel like I want to do that right now. And you're, you, quite often you've been guided. You turn left instead of right when you were planning to go right. You've been guided. You've just heard it unconsciously. So it's happening in the direct, in the dimension of the unconscious. When you go to sleep, you often have meetings with your guides and you will reassess what's happening to your physical self and your, your mental self, mental and emotional bodies. And your higher self will be constantly communing. How far has she come or he come and how much is he ready for and what's, what needs to happen next. And so the communication is happening in the fourth, in the astral dimension and in the fifth dimension when you go you know, beyond all of that um, to places of learning and higher learning and evolution and other other dimensions of existence, other realities, other planes, other planets. Let's not go there just yet. So what happens when you meditate is you allow yourself to come away from the 3D. When we're existing, when our eyes are open and we're going through the 3D, our physical reality, we're learning to manage our physical reality, we're dealing with day-to-day -day practicalities and concerns, we are very much in that reality, we place ourselves in that reality, we place, we place our consciousness in that reality, that is where we believe we are. As soon as we close our eyes, the brain starts to emit alpha brain waves and, in, and when we do that, we're already beginning to go inside ourselves. And in going inside ourselves, we're actually experiencing another dimension. You can call it the dimension of the unconscious and you can call the, the unconscious a gateway to connection with other dimensions. It doesn't matter what you call it technically. For now, for the purpose of this video, let's just say when you go into a state of meditation, you bring your focus away from the 3D physical and into the inner dimensions. And so you can become aware of any number of dimensions that are existing in parallel with the physical and therefore you can become aware of any number of communications that are already constantly happening in parallel, parallel with the communications you're having on the physical dimension. What happens is that you 
shut out the noise of the 3D and you say now I'm going to bring my attention inwards and listen to what else is going on. It takes practice, it takes time and it really does take committing to a regular meditational experience. One of my favourite mediums of all time, Doris Stokes, used to meditate every single day. She had an incredible connection with her guide and she was an incredible um, medium and that's what it takes and if you can't commit to that at least commit to a period of meditating for every day or at least commit to meditating on a regular basis maybe two or three times a week as much as you can but meditation is essential because you quiet the mind and you move away from the physical reality and you embrace the realities where your guides exist and are already speaking to you and you switch on your inner ears and become more able to hear them. Okay, so, and also they're just saying, <laughs> just to remind you, sometimes it might seem as if their voices get louder as we meditate more. Their voices are always the same. <laughs> it's just that your listening becomes more acute. And that's what meditation is, it's acute listening. So the better you get at meditating and shutting out this reality, the better, the more able you are to hear them. Okay, that's that. So raise your vibration. Number three, raise your vibration. So we talk about raising our vibration. Um, I'm going to link to another video that I made about raising your vibration. And, you know, there are lots of ways of doing that with diet, with laughter, with walks in nature. We don't often talk about why we want to raise our vibration. Well, there are several reasons. One of the reasons is because when we raise our vibration, we come into more into the frequency of love. And that's a wonderful thing for ourselves, for the planet. It makes our lives run more smoothly. It helps us to live from the heart and to deal with things much more easily. And it helps to raise the vibration of everyone around us and the planetary energy. What it also does is it brings us into the fifth dimension which is love and which is where most of our guides and teachers exist. We could talk about the technicalities of the dimensions above and we could talk about the astral realm but we're not going to go into that just yet. We can talk about that another time. But for now let's just say as a generic description and, and idea the more we raise our vibration, the more we raise our consciousness, and the more we raise our consciousness and our vibration, the easier it is for us to make those communications and those connections with our guides. The easier it is for us to hear them because we're much more on, we're on a much closer, more similar level. And it's not such a fight for them to get through our muddiness and murkiness. And it's not such, it's not so difficult for us to whoo, lift ourselves up into their frequency instantaneously. Okay, so number four, ask for a sign. So as we connect with our guides more, um, we will notice things more that happen on our physical reality um, that confirm and affirm the connections that we're making with our guides on the, in the finer dimensions. And you can ask for a sign. You can ask your guides to show you things in your daily reality. Um, you know, we talk about signs and synchronicities, and yes, they happen when we're very aligned, when we're on the right path, when we're thinking the right thoughts and doing the right things, pursuing the right things, the right adventures, I've just heard. Um, guides are very playful as well, so that's a real trademark thing. Their energy is very light, they're very playful. Um, of course, sometimes they have to be very serious, but there's always a sense that there's a, there's a joyfulness in communicating with us and there's a playfulness in the way that they teach us. Um, so ask for a sign. Um, basically, your guides are able to show you things uh, that, you know, angels often leave feathers and coins. We know about those. We know about number sequences. You can also suddenly switch on the radio at a particular time you feel guided to and there's a song that just makes perfect sense. But, you know, you might find that those are layered on top of each other. At the moment, I'm getting very, you know, an incredible amount of layered synchronicities from a, a particular couple of guides who are working with me on a particular area of my work and it is mind-blowing what they're able to do. So don't be afraid to ask for a sign because I think you'll be quite surprised at what you receive. And the reason that asking for a sign can help you to connect with your guides more is obviously the more energy you give to something, um, the more it increases and the more reassurance you get that it's 
happening, the more you will feel reassured and add more energy to it. It's like any relationship. If I want to have a conversation with someone and I ask them a question and they don't answer back, then it's not much of a conversation. If I ask them a question and they answer back with something quite surprising and intriguing, I might think of another question and then I get quite excited about the whole exchange and it builds and it builds and it builds and before you know it we're having a really exciting conversation and we're communicating and connecting and that connecting and that communicating is growing and flourishing and that's what they want you know to have for us to have a conversation for us to ask for that validation and for us to put our focus on them and on what they have to offer so that it will uh, manifest much more easily ask for a signal. Now that's different to asking for a sign because in my experience guides will come and they will give you different signals. They might be physical signals, things that you can remember as being specific to them. So I've got one particular guide who strokes here, you know, I feel a tickle there. I've got another guide, guide who is doing it now, makes my legs tingle. Uh, you know, they do different things that so that you know, ah, that's so and so nearby. So ask your guide, once you start to establish a connection with a particular guide or with your guardian angel, just close your eyes and just ask for a signal. And it might be, you know, your left arm growing warm or cool or, you know, buzzing in your hands. It's all different and all very unique for each individual guide. Okay, um, six, clear your energy. So obviously the more we clear our energy, the higher our vibration is and the more able they are to get through to us because they've got less of our dense fog to get through. And that fog can be anything um, in terms of, you know, the thinking, all thought creates energy. So if we've been down for a while or if we uh, panic about things or if we have disbelief, or fear energy or any of those kinds of energy or if we're working on old childhood stuff or if we've been in some very busy places or places that are not great for us and we've picked up energy that way keeping our energy clear and there are so many ways you can do that maybe I'll do another video about that keeping our energy clear is a great way of just making sure that we stay in that lighter frequency in that um, higher frequency where it's much more easy for them to reach us and they don't have to get through any of that you know they get they have to get through enough density to communicate with us in our realm of, of experience and existence without having to penetrate our a dense energy field, especially energies that are not ours. Clearing our energy also allows us to hear their guidance specifically, rather than being confused by all the other telepathic input that's coming from here, there and everywhere. So that's another thing. Every time you clear your energy, you clear your mind. Thank you. That's from Archangel Michael. Every time you clear your energy, you clear your mind, okay? So that's something for people who get quite confused about their path as well. Do you know salt baths, um, Florida water, whatever it's for you that you'd like to use? Um, keep your energy clear. Number seven, connect with the angels to banish fear. So, if you have any doubts at all about what sort of guides am I going to attract, or I don't know if I trust this, or how do I know who they're going to be, or how do I know I can trust them, just start by connecting with the angels. Connect with your guardian angel first. Read angel books and bring the angels around you more. You know, invoke their presence, ask them to be with you, ask Archangel Michael to protect all of the connections that you make with any of the guides. Talk to the ascended masters, trust the energy, call in Jesus, call in the energy of the Christ, call in the divine and, um, and keep it very much placed in the light. Don't just ask for any old guides go through the angels if you feel uncertain at all and always be very clear about who you're invoking okay eight trust what you receive test it and follow through to increase the connection so that's a little bit like asking for signs if you get some kind of inspiration or guidance check it you know wait to see if it actually happens if your guides say to you you know such and such is going to happen on tuesday make it no make a note of it write it down see if it happens and the more you see things coming to fruition the more you'll be able to build that trust and i actually recommend not doing too much asking about things in your own life to begin with because we're often too attached and even when we hear the answer we don't necessarily accept it so we often you know will write down the things 
everything that we think we want it to be. So experiment with, with people that you know. Ask them you know, to ask you things and ask your guides and see what comes through and then test it. Do things that are measurable and that you can test and then go back and ask for more. And always remember to say thank you because that keeps us in a really nice light heart energy rather than that desperate energy, the kind of energy that you get when you're trying to do an angel reading for yourself and you shuffle the cards and it's like, oh, don't like that card, oh, don't like that card. That kind of desperation you need to stay away from to, to create a pure connection, which is another reason that with students who are just starting, I always uh, suggest that they don't do readings for themselves straight away. Okay. Number nine, let go and release expectation of how. Seeing, sensing, feeling, release worry. I can't remember what I meant by that. Okay, right, release the expectation of how the answer will come. So in other words, if you sit down and you think, okay, I want to develop my clairvoyance, um, I want to see my guide, I want to see what colour is my guide's orb, and you close your eyes and you don't see anything, don't give up on that. Just open your heart and just ask, once you've asked for a connection, just ask for it to come through in the way that you will most understand. For some people, they will get stronger, clear, sentient um, impulses. They will have feelings um, rather than visions, uh, visual things. Um, for some, they will hear things. They will hear um, a few words or a sentence or, you know, maybe just one word or they'll hear something through someone else that they'll know is guidance. For some, they will just trust their knowing about something, some series of coincidences, and they'll be able to associate that with something they ask their guides about that day. So don't get attached to how your connection with your guide will happen because it will happen through the easiest channels. And they just said, we're always trying to find the easiest way through to you and the quickest way. And the easiest and quickest way through to you is the way that you are most developed. So don't, please don't get attached to or make assumptions about what is the right way to receive, okay? All of your gifts and faculties will be developed in good time and in perfect time. Okay, great. And number 10, keep a journal. Write everything down. So if you have a meditation, you connect with a guide and your guide gives you a gift or a sentence or a phrase or something that's useful or something for someone else that's useful, make a note of it. Make a note of everything every time you meditate so that you can look back on it because sometimes when we're in meditation, we get a lot of things coming through and we're not able to hold on to all of them. So I suggest you keep a notepad beside you during meditation and a pen. And as soon as you come back round, make a note of everything that you remember. And, you know, because in a couple of days you'll look back on things and you'll think, oh, I don't even remember that happening. It's a bit like when you do readings for people and you don't remember everything that you've said in the reading because it's, you know, things happen so quickly there's so much information that comes through from spirit all at once and you're also in an altered state when it comes through so when you come back to having to deal with your practical realities you're not necessarily going to be thinking you know oh so and so my guy john said that i need to eat more oranges you know so write everything down and keep a note of it and in a few months time you can look back on your progress and look back on where you started and and where you are now in developing that relationship and also it gives more validity and more reality, more concrete reality to things when you write them down. The written word is very powerful, my guides are saying, as we know, yes indeed. So write everything down and keep it as a record and also allow yourself to feel the motion of committing it to paper. And that's it everyone, thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed those 10 steps. Let me know how you get on with them. Do comment and let me know, you know where you are in your development and how you feel about all of this. And I'm also doing a special offer at the moment. I'm giving away three free mentoring sessions, mentoring taster sessions in May. If you do get this in May, um, I mean after May, or if you do if you do watch this video later on, then please message me anyway because I might run it again at some point and you never know when. So just get in touch, keep in touch, keep the communication flowing. If you want to be considered this time round for a free session, um, and in that session we can look at anything. We might uh, do a Q&A so I can answer some questions that you have about 
other areas of psychic and intuitive development or I'll teach you how to ground and open up and close down um, or how to call one of your guides in. It just depends on where you are, where I feel you are, what you're ready for, what your needs are. With a lot of people, a first session is really just teaching you how to get grounded. So, um, so it could be anything really. And this is what you need to do if you would like to be considered for it. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. Um, and just say hi, you know, post a comment, say, express an interest if you want to, that bit's not essential. Most important thing is that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, although it's always nice to say hello. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and then click on the link below and go to my website. And on my website you will find um, an option to subscribe to my messages. Uh, messages from the little book of daily guidance so you go to the daily guidance tab and you sign up and um, and then that way I can let you know you know keep you keep you posted on all my other news then you go to the contacts page on my website and just send me a message describing to me what is the thing that you're most interested in or what is your greatest challenge when it comes to psychic development, intuitive development, or connecting with your guides and angels, or getting grounded, or any of those things at all. If you're not sure what I do or what to say, you can look at my readings page and you'll see a list of the things that I cover in mentoring. And all I want you to do is to, in your message that you post on the contents, uh, contacts page, I want you to just say what would be the main thing that you would want to work with me on, um, work on with me, um, if you were to book a course of mentoring. And we're not necessarily going to work on that in your session, but I want to just get an idea of the things that people are interested in and the things that they are um, curious about and the things that they're finding challenging. And then what I will do is at some point I will look through the list of all the people who have uh, requested mentoring and I will see what I feel drawn to, what lights up or where my guides lead me and I will pick three people, possibly more and um, you know it might be ongoing, it might extend um, beyond May so um, and that's it so just uh, you know get in touch make a contact let me know who you are and let me know what you're thinking and in the meantime I just hope that this video has served you and has helped you and um, and enjoy enjoy all of your connections it's a wonderful fulfilling and exciting um, journey that we're on this development journey and uh, if you enjoy this video please pass it on to others please share it and uh, click on the like button and thank you very much for watching have a great day bye